Lou VC, the wax here. And this is a contest entry for my man, Jeff Witcher. Jeff is a cool dude. Uh, he, um, I started getting into this YouTubing with the help of JC from the flip side. And after we did a con, um, a video together, uh, and posted it, Jeff was one of the first ones to reach out, welcome me in, like the video we did. We did, we did a soundtrack showdown video. So, um, show my appreciation by supporting five. He has way more than this is late into the contest. He has way more than 500, uh, subs, but you can always use support from more people to bring a light to his channel through me who has very few subscribers, but don't feel sorry for me. So his, the contest theme is five albums, artists that influence your journey into music. Uh, that's how I'm interpreting it. This is not verbatim. So I, I grew up in Washington, DC, you know, uh, I live in Los Angeles. You might know sometimes I wear nationals hats, but, um, I grew up near the arena, the Capitol Center, so I got to see a lot of concerts um, growing up. And I, I'm not going to go into the Beatles because I've used uh, the albums I have in other videos, but um, I'm going to go my formative years of bands I saw and I got into. One of the first bands I got into was through my uh, brother. I have two older brothers, and um, one of the big bands I really got into was Yes. Um, this is a Record Store Day release when I started get really getting back into uh, collecting vinyl. Great album. But if you don't have a Yes album, get a Yes album. Um, just um, phenomenal musicians, songs. I've seen Yes in concert when they had their big kind of comeback in the 80s. I think I've seen them four times and actually just in, in my, um, I work in the film business and I've got to meet, uh, Trevor Rabin. He was a cool dude because he scores a lot of movies. So I go, I've seen you in concert and geeked out and he was kind of cool about it. So, um, so yes. Okay. And, um, I, I think they've influenced in the, the prog rock, uh, they're like in the top three. I don't know who the other two are, but they're they're up there, and just and they just put out album after album that was awesome. So I could talk forever. Roundabout, and um, the next goes without saying. The Stones, Rolling Stones. This is uh, blue vinyl. Uh, I, think, I don't think you can get it anymore. Yeah, Target had it exclusive. Um, and not this is the best made album of, but this has a lot of, all the songs are awesome on here. Um, Emotional Rescue. Um, now my funny story is as a youth, I didn't see the Stones, but my brother went and he bought me a t-shirt and I wore it to school, junior high. And I told everyone I went, since I lived near the arena, people believe me. And one of my teachers said, you went to the show? And I go, Yeah. And he goes, damn you. I felt, felt good, but I, I lied. I didn't go. But here's my story. Since I've lived in L.A. probably over half my life, um, they did, like, I want to say when Staples Center, which is, you know, pretty much the main arena in L.A., uh, I think they did, like, a week of shows there. And I think it was their, I want to say their 50th anniversary tour, but I could be wrong. And it wasn't selling well. They weren't selling it out. And there was like a thing going around where they're releasing tickets for nothing. And I bought two tickets for 25 bucks each. They were going for 400 by the way, when this week of shows went on. And me and my buddy went, and we were at the end of the court, just as the seats went up in the risers, directly dead center in front of the stage. It was freaking awesome. 
And, you know, they're up there in age. And it was the thing. And they did an awesome show. I was so impressed. And I was going to say, it was like watching your father up there just like going, what, Dad, you could do this? It was an awesome show. And, it, you know, never gets old and awesome. All right, next one. Everyone should have this album again. And Beach Boys, Pet Sounds. In fact, I have two copies of Pet Sounds. I have this you know, under $25 one. This 50th anniversary. It's probably digital. But sounds good. Um, but I have this unusual version where in the early 70s, they were putting out these two for albums. So it has Carl and the Passions came with bum, 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 Pet Sounds. And supposedly this version was a remastered at the time, supervised by Carl. That's the story I heard. I hope it's true. I did a video about it, wondering if it was true. And supposedly this is the version they used, I think for that version, the 50th anniversary. So it could be wrong, but this is kind of cool that they had these two for albums. Um, this is Pet Sounds. Pet Sounds label there. There you go. Two versions of Pet Sounds. Okay, and I'm going to end this one up with a band that uh, probably as a kid, little kid, you would hear the songs on the radio and n never gets old is Boston. The first album is a picture disc. Um, Boston, more than a feeling. But here's really where Boston got in, you know, again, college when third stage came out and it was like all these rumors they're working on an album they're working on an album didn't it? it's like tom schultz's studio exploded or flooded or whatever the story is that's how i'm remembering it it's coming out it's coming out and then right in the middle at college that third stage came out it's like everyone listened to it and that album was awesome and amanda and every time in that song ritual that they hit that triangle and I go, bing. I hit my nose, bing. Na, 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 na. Ah, Boston. Brad Delp, sad. But Boston's an awesome ass fan. All right, so Jeff, I hope you liked it. Hope everyone liked it. Those are my albums. Uh, until next time, the wax back. I only did four. I have to do the fifth one. The fifth one is... I can't believe I forgot this. I got so caught up in Boston. YouTube. Okay. These are the... You know, if you join the fan club, they put out these uh, singles from the Joshua Tree. YouTube. And I have several YouTube albums. I have I've shown uh, Under a Blood Red Sky in another video. All right, I have a YouTube story. Again, I grew up near the arena. And just so you, I, I might have told the story before, but I used to, when as a kid, I handed out freebies for the Washington Bullets at the time. And the, our contact would get us tickets to shows. So I had a choice back in the day. I had a choice to go see Chicago in, in, or U2. I, I made a better choice. I saw U2. It was the Unforgettable Fire Tour. And the story I've told, in, I think, in another video where Bono said, I hate uh, security, and he encouraged the fans to rush the stage. Fans rushed the stage. Look the story up on uh, YouTube. I've told the story. But if you're not influenced by YouTube as a person from the 80s, you're insane. I will say this. I've seen YouTube a lot of times. The last time... I wasn't so happy with. They did a show at the... I hate... I really am not a big fan of uh, stadium concerts. I always say, like, one of the best shows I've ever saw is from the same band as one of the worst shows, and that was Genesis. I saw Genesis in an arena. Freaking awesome. I saw Genesis at a stadium. Horrible. It was just... The sound was bad. It just, it just didn't work for me. So I saw um, you two at... The, at the Rose Bowl and the, the stage was blocked. They did, they, it was the tour where they played the, uh, um, 
Unforgettable Fire. I think it was, you could yell at me if I'm wrong. And they went and did another, another part on a smaller stage off to the side where they played other songs. And you couldn't see them. It was obstructed by everything. It was ridiculous. Why could not you just stay on the main stage and say, look, we're playing other songs for you because you paid a lot of money for this didn't need to turn into a ramp video, but it's awesome. It did. Okay. So cool. Jeff, I added this on because I'm an idiot and got caught up in my choices. Thank you. Bye.